Latest course we played has been called The Bridges. It is a golf course in Gunther, Gunther, Texas, which is approximately a 40, maybe an hour drive out of downtown Dallas, straight north up the um, Dallas North Park, North Toll Road. And then you got to go uh, another 15 miles to get to the course. And I, I feel really odd about this course because it was a very good course. It was a very good course, but at the same time, it was strange. Now, this course still stands out, I think, very, very clearly. And that the nearest course that I can think of to it is something like Wincoat, which is a sprawling course with some interaction with a section... Of a neighborhood. The Bridges is very much like that. There are a number of houses uh, that are near the course. This course would be the equivalent of, say, not just the neighborhood um, golf course, but also the neighborhood public pool. The houses are certainly upscale. Um, let me let me just say that the houses in the neighborhood were you know, starting in the mid-260s, and in the mid-260s in Gunther, Texas, you could probably buy a house that would be, you know, seven seven 750000 you know, in, in anywhere inside of um, Manassas and and east of Annapolis, or west of Annapolis. So I don't think it's, it's quite the same. However, it's close in terms of the fact that there were some holes with some houses on them, but most of the holes had virtually no houses on them. And a lot of the holes, if they had houses in sight, those houses were close to a mile away. I mean, way away. And in this situation, there was almost no road noise on the course. And there were almost no houses that were near the course. But not quite. There were still a couple of house, a couple of um, holes where there were houses. The other course was just as bad as any, as any other neighborhood course. In some in some places where you're you're playing between two houses or you're playing next to a row of houses or there's a green that's you know 50 yards off somebody's backyard and you know there's there's certainly a, a fairway where there are houses all along the fairway. Um, there's no question that that happened in a few of the holes here, but for a large part of the course, no houses, no cars, nothing but fairway and rough and the occasional cart path um, section and the occasional grass that had been allowed to grow up to ankle height or knee height. And certainly there was you know, deep kind of sticker rough in places. And certainly there were, you know, um, link style swales on the fairways in some places. And certainly there were a number of ponds and some creeks and so forth crossing the, the fairways and so on. But for the most part, it was just flat, very slopely, very slightly sloped, moderately wide fairways, some rough, and I'm talking about maybe 20 yards of rough at the most on each side of the fairway. And then ankle high or knee high grass for almost every hole. And even the holes where there were houses around there, there, there was still this kind of ankle to knee high grass, which was so thick and so deep that you not only were not going to find your ball if it went in there, you probably wouldn't want to go in there yourself. You, you just wouldn't want to go wading around in this tall grass and, and, and Texas heat, in Texas heat, not knowing what kind of critters are in there. You probably wouldn't really want to go in there and, and wade around. This is the kind of grass that uh, some courses have. Not a lot of courses have, but some courses do have it. I can think of Raspberry Falls, maybe Oak Creek, um, some parts of, what is it, Lake, Lake Presidential. Certainly, Wincote. Certainly, Buell Rock, certainly uh, Whiskey Creek, absolutely Musket Ridge. You know, they, there's courses that have the same kind of stuff 
where you hit into that ball and basically what happens is the ball will bounce off the fairway because it's not going straight down the fairway or it's, it's going to go diagonally or, or if you're really bad even sideways but it'll go diagonally off the side of the fairway and it'll go and bounce and bounce because the ground is really hard bounce and bounce and bounce real hard and the next thing you know it's bouncing into this deep grass I lost quite a few balls like that the second problem is that in the the holes where it was vertical you're looking up in you know in the sky and here it's bright and it's just almost impossible to see the ball if you're looking up in the sky in certain especially if you're looking up anywhere near the sun it's really hard to see the ball I lost a couple of balls like that I just couldn't see them it was just that simple so the the key to playing this course is you have to hit the ball low and straight and short you can only hit it so long. If you're trying to play over waist, okay, and you hit it slightly offline to the waist side, it's gone. If you don't get your cut or your fade or whatever you're trying to get, it's gone. You you can play long shots, but you have to hit conservative long shots and cheat to the center of the course. And if you over cheat and it's long, it's going to go long. Say like it's a dog leg uh, right or a crescent right, like the first hole. If you're trying to play over the waist on the right-hand side and trying to play to the middle of the fairway, say, you know, 250, 275 down away from the tees, and you miss that shot to the right or to the left, it's gone. It's that simple. You, you have to hit very accurate shots under control on this course to stay, you know, to keep your ball in play. It's not as if the course is hard. What it is is different because most courses, I've played enough courses, I know this for a fact, most courses are, are one or two types. They either have very wide fairways, a very wide rough, and almost no real rough to speak of, but certainly they're wide enough where you can hit the ball off, offline, left or right or something. Just like Water Creek that I played and reviewed recently, way more than enough space that you need to keep the ball in play unless you just stand you know, sideways and hit like pretty much off into the rough on the left. And there's ad more than adequate rough to do that, but the main thing is that on, on the course, there's plenty of space. There might be some water, there might be some waste, but there's lots of space. On, on, on the bridges, there is only a lot of space when you think about playing from left to right across the fairway. When you think about playing down the fairway, and you're talking about hitting the ball 150, 200 yards, or 250 yards even, there's not a lot of space until you get towards the green. And even then, there's still not a huge amount of space around the green. And even then, the greens usually had swales on them, where if you went over the top of the swale, it would bounce off and go down into the waste, or into some kind of culvert or something behind the green. So it was, it was a, a very easy course to lose balls on. That was one problem. Second, it was deceptively wide considering the wind, which was blowing balls all over the place unless you hit them low driving balls that penetrated the wind and, and you know just went directly down the fairway. Again, hitting high balls, hitting anything with any spin, getting it up in the air, you're asking for trouble because if the ball doesn't go where you think it's, even the, even in the general direction where you think it's going to go, it's just going to go spinning off to the right or off to the left, and the next thing you know, it's in the waist. It, it could easily be a good drive on most days when it's not windy, but if it is windy and you power pull the ball to the left, it goes straight way off into the, into the waist. If you spin it or cut it to the right, it goes way off. The only way to survive playing this course in the wind is you have to hit good, solid, direct, well-aimed shots or play short. One of the two. You either don't take a chance on any long shots or you hit the ball very solidly and long. And eventually... I began to do that. I began to hit more draws than cut shots. I began to make sure I was hitting the ball lower than higher. And eventually, I kind of got 
this under control, not putting the ball up in the air. I mean, it was nice to put the ball up in the air sometimes when the wind was behind me, but if it was off to the sides or in front of me, putting the ball up in the air was going to just do nothing but get you in trouble. So I avoided it except when I was hitting short approaches into the green. And I began to have a, a fair amount of fun playing this course as opposed to going, I have no idea where that ball just went. I have, I don't know what I just did. You know, I don't know if it went up, left, right, whatever. I can't see it and I can't find it in a fair way, which is what happened basically in, in um, the first and, and, the, and the third hole, especially because the third hole, especially from the back tees, you're playing up at about a, a 25 degree angle and the fairway is beyond this large stretch of waste, beyond this tree, and it's all uphill and then you gotta go uphill to the green. So this, the third hole was kind of the hardest hole in the course. I should say it was definitely the hardest hole in the course. The first hole was, and in any case, there were still shots where you have a split fairway and on the right side it's short and on the left side it's long and the left side it's down near a, a, a river, a, almost a river really, and on the right side it's dry and high and, and up near, you know, you've got these uh, link style whole, uh, swales where if you go over the swales it's over in the waist on the right side. There were some really good holes. And I thought it was a fun course to play, and it was very big, and, it, and the course, the greens and everything were in great condition, and it was just lots of space. I, I think there were like two holes or three holes which were below average because there were a lot of houses around them, but for the most part, it was just get out there, hit the ball, and do the best you can. You know, lots of space, lots of everything. And then there was the 18th hole, which was just masochistic. So... If you can at least get 200 yards out of your drive, you're going to clear the waste. So, you know, you have to do that kind of math on this course. You you have to know where you are, where you're trying to hit, and what the distance is, and whether you have a good chance of clearing that distance, or whether you're going to have to work at it. And if you work at it, you know you're going to have a good chance of hitting a bad shot. So you want to pick a shot that's easy enough for you to hit, but still long enough to be useful and it's very tricky it does make you think this course really does make you think about what you're doing and if you go right or left you're in the waste it's that simple so the other big problem with having these wide open spaces is that it because there are no trees or very low little tree coverage there's almost nothing to stop the wind there's no channel that you can go play in where there's not much wind you know unless you hit the ball up high. There's just wind, and, in, and especially in Texas around here, on, on most of the time, the wind is blowing at least five to 10 miles an hour. Powerful shots with very little spin, you know, away from where you wanna go. You need to spin it in where you wanna go and make it drive down the fairway and drive towards, you know, the, the safe part of the fairway. For the first nine holes, it was like, you know, just like kiss it goodbye to play you know, to hit anything other than a short iron. It, it just was that brutal. But it was a good learning experience, and I, I think it was a good, I think it was a good thing because I rarely play courses that are that hard, and I rarely have to worry about hitting good shots that often. So for me, despite the fact that I was losing balls, it was helping me play better because it forced me to play better Whereas normally, I can get away with hitting balls 10 degrees offline and 250 yards. Um, very rarely do I lose balls like that. But on this course, it was happening on almost every shot for a long time. I thought I was doing all right. I thought I had stopped losing balls and, and I was having a good time and everything. 18, it was like, oh, let's just start over and, and start losing every shot we take. Anyway, it was a fun course. I enjoyed it. I certainly can recommend it. Very rarely do I, I play a course, and it's been a while, very rarely do I play a course where I have trouble just consistently losing balls. I'll lose a ball every now and then, but um, on this course, for the first four holes, I lost almost every ball I played. And on the 18th, likewise. That's the Bridges in Gunther, Texas. Solid B-plus course.